Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's quick hit session all about the bougie. Bougie, known outside of medicine as sort of a snarky remark for fancy, rich, well-to-do people, kind of like these people here on their seesaw with their priest or whatever's going on. Interestingly, though, it's actually derived from the word bourgeoisie, which is actually middle class, so it's not fancy. If you really wanted to insult these fancy people, you'd have to yell what they are. You'd have to yell proletariat at them, uh, which is just too many syllables, and uh, you know, ain't nobody got time for that. So today we're going to talk all about this bad boy, the bougie, and I've got three little sections for you. The first is, what is a bougie and sort of where did it come from? The next one, we're going to talk about three ways to use the bougie, two which I'm sure you've heard of, and one which I'll bet is kind of new to you. And then we're going to talk about the future of the bougie, which is really exciting. So let's start at the top. What is the bougie? Well, to explain that, I'm going to have to take you back to 1949 as presidents are getting sworn in and Stalin is doing terrible things in the Soviet Union. And meanwhile, this cheeky anesthesiologist over here is playing around with tools outside of his specialty. He is playing with this thing over here, which is a Foley catheter from the 1800s. But if you take a close look at it, you'll notice that there's something going through the center of it and poking out the end. And that right there is the original gum elastic bougie, which was actually used for urethral dilation. And so this anesthesiologist saw this and said, you know what, I'm going to use that to intubate people as an endotracheal tube introducer. Uh, and ever since then, we've been using it. And this guy's name, believe it or not, Sir Robert McIntosh, yes, of the Macintoshes, of the Macintosh blade. This guy gave us standard geometry laryngoscopy as well as the first ever bougie intubation, which is crazy. And then after that, in the 1970s, they developed it a little bit more. And before you know it, we've got bougies and endotracheal tube introducers of all shapes, sizes, colors, and whatnot. This is the one that most of us are familiar with. This is the blue bougie, as it is affectionately called. Uh, I love that it still has a coup de tip, sort of a throwback and a nice reference to its, its origins as a Foley catheter. Very easy to use, had great success with this. I just want you guys to be aware of another bougie. This one here, the purple bougie. And rather than have me sort of drone on about it, I'm gonna introduce you to an expert on it and we'll have him talk about it for a second. Okay, so we have this new, amazing, purple, malleable bougie. And when it comes out of the package, it looks just like this. It comes preloaded with a stopper at 35 centimeters. So when you load up an endotracheal tube onto it, it stops right at the right place so that it's a stylet. So you can use it as a stylet. And if you want to use it with a standard geometry blade, you can just bend it in a straight to cuff shape you're using a Macintosh standard geometry blade, or if you're using a hyperangulated blade, glide scope type blade, you can make it hyperangulated to fit your glide scope or whatever else you want to do. You can also remove the stopper, and now you have a bougie, which you can make in a conventional configuration like this, or you can hyperangulate your bougie, cannulate the, through the cords, and then railroad your tube over the bougie as usual. And for anyone who thinks I'm just a Ruben Strayer fanboy, you are just 100% correct. I, I can't even argue it. Great, so let's talk about ways to actually use the bougie. And the first one is what we're all most familiar with, which is endotracheal intubation. And so the whole point of the bougie is that it is going to be the first thing through the airway and help you introduce the endotracheal tube into the airway. And sometimes that can be good, even when you see parts of the airway, like in this video from Dr. Gali uh, at EM Recess on Twitter, you can see there's a view of the cords. It's not great. And certainly an endotracheal tube would get in the way and obscure that view. But nicely, we can thread the bougie in through the cords. And then while leaving the laryngoscope in the mouth, we can railroad the endotracheal tube down over the bougie in through the cords. It's worth noting here that after you pass the bougie through the cords, do not take your blade out of the mouth. Do not lose your view. This is important for three reasons. First, if you didn't advance your bougie quite enough, it's possible your bougie could migrate out of the airway. And if you've taken your blade out and you can't see anything, then you won't know that that happened. Number two is the blade is actually keeping 
the tongue and all of the soft tissues out of the path of the endotracheal tube that you're about to pass into the airway. So if you take your blade out, all of those tissues can collapse and you're going to have a hard time actually passing the tube. And number three, you want to be able to tell when the balloon is passing through the cords or where you think the cords are. If you take your blade out, you have no view. You're just blindly inserting the tube and hoping it goes in the spot that you thought it was going to go into. The bougie isn't just good when you can partially see the cords. It's also good for when you can't see the cords, but you can still see some landmarks because you can use the bougie to confirm that you're in the airway. And there are two ways for you to confirm that you are in the airway. And the first one is to actually feel the clicks of the tracheal rings as you're going down. And then the second one is bougie holdup, which is to gently insert the bougie all the way into the airway until it stops, till you've hit essentially the end of where the bougie can reach in the airway. And if you've hit holdup, you should still have a lot of bougie coming out of the mouth. So you know that you're in the airway as opposed to if you can bury the bougie to the hilt so there's nothing coming out of the mouth, you're likely in the esophagus diving into the stomach and then who knows where. So we can see a good example of that in this video. Not a great view. We can see the epiglottis. So this is a prime indication for the bougie and you can see the bougie going in, snaking anteriorly where we think the airway is. And at this point, you're feeling for tracheal rings and inserting nice and gently until you hit gentle resistance. Stop. Remember, keep your view. Don't take the blade out of the mouth yet. And then railroad the ET tube over the bougie while someone holds the bougie at the top so you don't bury the bougie down into the lungs. You can hold the bougie in a couple of different ways. I actually think just holding it regularly or maybe uh, with a little bit of a bend in it so you remember which way your coude tip is facing as you insert it is probably the best way. And the reason I think that utilizing the whole bougie is nice is because you can then look for holdup. You can keep inserting it until it stops. Some people like this, the Kiwi grip. Um, it's not for me, and I'll just tell you why. First of all, it'll flick up and flick me in the face 100% of the time, every time. Um, second, it also uh, negates one of the reasons you're using the bougie, because if you don't feed enough of the bougie through the tube, you may not get holdup. And if the whole reason you're using the bougie is to confirm that you're in the airway, yeah, you may feel tracheal rings or you may not, but if you're not getting hold up, then you've sort of defeated the purpose of using the bougie in the first place. So I like to utilize the whole bougie unraveled and then have someone give me the ET tube over the top of it. The second most common indication that we talk about in emergency medicine, at least for use of a bougie is doing a crike. And this is exactly the same reason. We're gonna take the bougie, insert it into the airway, and if we get hold up, then we know we're in the right place. But if it stops immediately or we are just able to bury it, it's possible you're just dissecting through soft tissues at that point. So we'll see a nice demonstration of use of the bougie in a crike here. Make the hole in the cricothyroid membrane, insert the bougie nice and gently down into the airway until you get hold up. And once you've gotten hold up, then you can railroad the endotracheal tube over top. This last indication is maybe one you haven't heard of. I certainly didn't hear of it until researching this topic. And that is a bougie guided chest tube insertion. Yes, insertion of a chest tube using a bougie. And the indications for this are uh, a, a person that is gonna have a hard time getting a chest tube, maybe because of their habitus or whatever other reason where you're gonna need to maintain that tract before you put the tube in. And Taming of the Shrew has a really amazing video here by Dr. Ryan LaFollette who shows us how to do that. So he makes his hole in the chest and puts his finger in it. And instead of following with the tube, he follows with the bougie first to keep, to keep that tract open. And so what he'll say is he'll aim the coup de tip posteriorly and superiorly, guide it to a pre-established mark on the bougie so he doesn't put it in too deep. And then from there, he'll hold on to the bougie, grab the chest tube, and railroad it over the top just like he would an endotracheal tube, and making sure that he feeds it out the back end of the chest tube so he doesn't bury the, the bougie when he inserts the chest tube. I have not done this. I have friends that have done this before. 
Um, I can see maybe some hesitation in inserting a slightly more rigid, slightly pointier thing blindly into the chest, uh, but you should just know that it exists and some people do it. Bougie future, very, very exciting. So one of the limitations of using a bougie is that when you get into the airway, it may be even more anterior than you expected, or your bougie may be going anteriorly, but you can't get it to dive down posteriorly into the airway. So introducing the flexible tip bougie, which is very cool, you can see at the proximal end of the bougie, there are these ridges. And what you do is you pinch the bougie and you sort of wiggle your fingers back and forth and you can manipulate the tip of the bougie to go up or down and navigate yourself into the airway. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. A nice introduction to the bougie. We talked about where they came from. Thank you again, Sir Dr. McIntosh. Dr. Sir McIntosh, it's unclear. We talked about three indications, which is using them for endotracheal intubation, a crike, and also using them for a chest tube and that also on the horizon, we're gonna have flexible bougies that we can manipulate in real time while they're in the airway. As always, feel free to hit me up if you have questions, comments, and would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much.